Welcome back, my friends, to Under the Classic Rock. This time I head deep into the interpretive spirit of Emerson, Lake, and Palmer. Welcome back, my friends, to the show that never ends. Ladies and gentlemen, Emerson, Lake, and Palmer. White horses and ladies by the score. may be upset with this observation, but I think ELP was just a continuation of Keith Emerson's 1969 band, The Nice, except with much better players. A wise guy, huh? <laughs> yeah. Much, much better musicians. I mean, from the first cut of the first album, you can tell you are listening to some very skilled, kick-ass musicians. ELP had their first large-scale show at the Isle of Wight in August of 1970. Fans at the show were blown away by the pure power that came from these three on stage. Some said the band was so good it was scary. The band came out of backstage jams between Keith Emerson of The Nice and Greg Lake of King Crimson. Their bands were on the same marquee for a number of shows. During these impromptu jams, they discovered something. They wanted their own band. They started talking to drummers, and one of them was Mitch Mitchell of Jimi Hendrix's Experience. Mitchell suggested a jam. The press got wind of this impending jam, and voila, instant supergroup. Emerson, Lake, Mitchell, and Hendrix. While the jam never happened, Emerson and Lake moved on, played with a few other drummers until they came upon Carl Palmer from the band Atomic Rooster. Palmer really did not want to jump ship, but E&L loved the way he gelled with them and went on asking him to join, pestering him relentlessly. He finally relented, and ELP was formed in London, England in 1970. Ooh, a lucky man, he was. After the Isle of Wight gig with a 600,000-plus audience, word of ELP spread pretty quick. They were playing and selling out 20,000-seat arenas without any albums out. Not that they weren't working in the studio, but they got so popular so fast in Europe that they had to squeeze in their studio time. In November of 1970, Emerson, Lake, and Palmer was released. ELP was taking the progressive rock thing to a whole other level. The mixture of jazz, rock, folk, and classical had been explored before with bands like Yes and King Crimson, but with Keith Emerson's immersions into classical music, the band was in a different ballpark than all the others. Greg Lake quickly took on the management of the band. He stated in an interview in 2003 that the three were not good friends, they were very much a working partnership. He had been producing King Crimson records and took on the same role with ELP. But the band got so popular so fast that Lake realized he could not wear all the hats. They needed management and quickly. They were just about to sign on with Peter Grant, who was successful with Led Zeppelin. But Jimmy Page then stepped in and said, I don't think so, mate. That's not going to happen. Well, maybe I can't do a good Jimmy Page. Anyway... With a heavy touring schedule in 1970 through 1973, the band did manage to crank out two more albums. The second in 1971 with the Armadillo Tank of Tarkas. The third album, November 71, was Mizorsky's Pictures at an Exhibition. It was a live show recorded in March of 1971. The band's British record company, Island Records, thought the Pictures album was great and released it. Across the pond at Atlantic, they said, no thanks, this won't sell, there's no radio hits. Well, a couple months later, after huge sales in Europe and bootlegs getting back to the U.S., the record company came crawling back. Pictures at an exhibition was another huge seller in the U.S. for ELP. 
Over the next two years, ELP continued their relentless pace of concerts and million-plus selling albums. Trilogy, 1972. You see, it's all. Brain Salad Surgery in 1973. And then, in 1974, they took a break. Three years of dead silence from the first supergroup. Though the record companies did release Welcome Back My Friends in August of 74, which was the band's best-selling album. Oh, by the way, Keith Emerson hated that title supergroup he thought it put way too much pressure on them. I had enough! Part 2 of ELP started in 1977 with Works Volume 1 and Volume 2. Volume 1 was new material, but three quarters of the double album was solo work from each. Volume 2 of Works was released six months later, and it consisted of tracks from the cutting room floor and previously released albums. The band went on to tour to support the Works work. The first 18 shows were done with a full orchestra and choir, and then the money ran out. So they had to finish the 1977 tour with just Emerson, Lake, and Palmer. As with any band, the ELP egos started to clash in 1978. Keith Emerson moved to the Bahamas, but he was able to persuade his other bandmates to record another album in the Bahamas, and they called it Love Beach. We can make it to Love Beach with our pirate blues. Because of the strength of early ELP albums, Love Beach did sell well, but critics hated it, thought it was more popish, and the usual fans were not really impressed. Two more albums were recorded in the 90s, Black Moon in 92, and the ninth and final studio album was In the Hot Seat in 1994. The original band had numerous get-togethers and reunites through the 90s and 2000s. There was so much video and audio material from the band's performances over the years that record companies and the band have put out scores of DVDs and new CDs showing the great years between 70 and 74. But then death put an end to the band in 2016. Both Keith Emerson and Greg Lake died the same year. Some true and false before we pack up all the gear here for ELP. The critics loved ELP. Oh boy, false. Here's just a quick taste from the critics. How do you spell pretentious? ELP. These guys are as stupid as their most pretentious fans. ELP represented everything wrong with progressive rock. And then there was the waste of time, talent, and electricity. And true, there was another band called ELP. In 1986, Emerson and Lake put together a band with drummer Cozy Powell. Palmer was too involved with Asia to come back and play with them. You can hear and download Under the Classic Rock on iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Google Play, Player FM, and on iHeartRadio. If you have any suggestions for upcoming shows, you can reach me at undercr at gmail.com or on the Under the Classic Rock Facebook page. And I thank you for listening and downloading by the thousands Under the Classic Rock. Thanks a lot, and we'll talk to you soon. Uh, hello? Uh, yes, this is, uh, Keith Emerson's brother, Ted. Uh, some facts you forgot on your show. Oh, wait, hold on. Ted? Did you say your name was Ted? Yeah, 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 yeah it was Ted. I, I taught him how to play chopsticks at two. Okay, <laughs> I've done pretty good research on, on, uh, Emerson, Lake, and Palmer. I have not seen any Ted as a brother of Keith. Well, yes, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not that well known, that's for sure, but I heard your fine show, but you forgot one thing. What's that? Uh, Ted? He, yes, he, he, went, no, yes uh, he was inducted into the Hammond Hall of Fame in the 2000s. You forgot to bring that out in your fine show. Th- uh, thank you, Ted Emerson. We'll talk to you soon. Oh, uh, one more thing. Yeah.